Hey everyone, Kenny Tony coming at you today. Yes, 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 we got another video for you. So today's video basically is gonna be about a little bit of work that I've gotten done to the Raptor 250 and what we're gonna be going to do. So uh, I am having a crazy issue with the audio of my videos. So in the last video I did state that I've got my audio issue corrected and I did. However, I got two days worth of footage and my batteries went dead and I didn't know it. So I'm basically gonna have to be really up on that because I have a whole bunch of video and there's like no audio to it and there's plenty of work. So basically in this video, what we're gonna do is just talk about a couple parts that I got in the mail and that I'm gonna get installed. Yeah, they're kind of simple things and they're things that most anybody can do. However, I try to document the majority of this process so that when it goes to the next person and they ask me questions, they can know one, that I'm legit, two, things have been done, and three, that I've done these things the proper way. So enjoy this video. I'm gonna do some voiceover through it. Hopefully I only can keep you for about 10 minutes and that's it. All right, so we're real quickly gonna go over the few parts that I received in the mail. We have the Moose Racing hand grips. We have some Kevlar rear brakes for the Raptor 250. We also got the battery box lid. And that is very important because people tend to just throw the batteries in there and as you see, they crack and burst open the air box, which requires you to replace the whole thing. There are some aftermarket de devices that you can purchase to kind of strengthen that. However, we're just gonna replace it and keep it all OEM. Also, they didn't have an air box lid or anything on there so it looks like mice chewed up that guard but back to the per parts that we purchased we have a new key because i just left the other one at the other guy's house because i didn't want to go back and the oil filter and spark plugs are also a must so we're going to go ahead and get these moose racing hand grips installed they are directional there is an r and an l on each one but you want to make sure that when you put the grips on that you can read the moose racing on them. So I usually squirt a little bit of adhesion promoter down in mine and it's kind of like a little pre-paint substance that you can use to help adhesion to plastic, but it definitely holds those grips on there really well and it creates a real solid, sturdy hand grip. So here I am showing you the R, letting you know that it's gonna go onto that side. And right now it's still wet, so they slide on there well, you get on position well, and within minutes they're gonna be pretty solid and tacky, and it's gonna hold real firm. I'm having a little hard time getting that one slid on because it's starting to set up, so we're just gonna let these dry and that's gonna be good. Taking them off shouldn't be any problem, you just get a razor, cut them and pull them off. And right here I'm just adjusting the moose racing words so that when it dries, it's actually in a good position to where it's gonna look well while it's on there. We're gonna go ahead now and get the key installed. Use some of that dielectric grease on there. It helps with the waterproofing. And this is gonna be simple. We're just gonna plug and play and make sure it's gonna connect well. And when you turn the key on and off, we're gonna make sure that that neutral light in the front comes on and off. And that's a success. On to the next part. 12 millimeter is gonna be your friend when it comes down to changing the rear brakes. So we're gonna break loose the caliper bolts. Not 100% sure if they're gonna be necessary, but we're gonna go ahead and just take those loose and see what we'll be working with. I use a short extension to make sure it can fit in there in between the sprocket guard and everything, but we're able to flip that up in the air after we've taken those off. And it's gonna also be a 12 millimeter that takes the brake pad retaining nuts off but first i need to use a flathead in order to get that clip off and then we can get the 12 millimeter on there and then we can get these ratcheted down now after i took that off i realized that it was better to just keep those bolts on there with the clamp and the bracket to make sure i had a little bit more leverage because the leverage has helped me to get those broken loose then after that real quickly they unwound and it came right out From looking at it, these brake pads are non-existent and there's nothing there at all. So we're gonna do a quick comparison to the ones that we've received in the mail to show that brakes are supposed to have pads on them. <laughs> and these definitely don't have anything. So nothing compared to something. So the brake piston itself is gonna to have to go over and I'm gonna use a C-clamp to be able to do that. 
that's kind of a standard thing for most people who work on any kind of brakes you get a c-clamp and you're able to push that push that piston over now one of the things you have to make sure is that you loosen up the park brake bolt you will have to use a 12 millimeter on that as well there's one bolt and then a locking nut you need to just unscrew it a little bit maybe a half an inch and that will allow that piston to come back far enough so that you're able to fit both brakes on because as the brakes wear down you will have to tighten that bolt up to get the park brake to work well so with the park brake working with no pads i had to unscrew that to slide it back to make sure that we were going to have space for the new pads to go on Now that we have everything completed to take it apart, it's just going to be the reverse process to get everything back in. So right now we're going to go ahead and put those two brake pins back in. They're going to be screwed down with a 12 millimeter and then I'm going to use a set of channel locks and I'm going to crimp the locking mechanisms back in place. Then we're going to be ready to put that caliper right back on and put the two 12 millimeter bolts in. At this point, we didn't introduce any air into the system, so we shouldn't have to re-bleed anything. We should actually only need to pump our brakes a few times and everything should engage like it should. Once that's done, I'm going to screw the park brake bolt back in and then lock that into place and make sure that the park brake activates as it should. That it wasn't too bad. 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes, somewhere in that area. So we got the couple things done in this video and it's gonna conclude it, it's gonna close it up. So basically that rear brake, the Kevlar brake seems to be doing well. So we got the rear brake, <laughs> we got the rear brake installed as well as got the park brake adjusted. So those work well. We have went ahead and I just went ahead and put the oil filter in there just so it's one of those things that I don't forget later on. So the oil filter is in there, so that's not a problem. I greased the front A-arms and I changed that one front bushing out. That was real simple and that really wasn't anything worth showing. However, the proof that that's done is the fact that there's no more play in the front. We got the Moose Racing grips on. Those just definitely give it a nice little clean touch. They, they look real good and it just takes away from the ones that were kind of beat up on there. That's kind of like cheap insurance. They just kind of make things look a whole lot better at a person coming in and then the quad looks already beat up. Yeah, that seems like it's about it. So those are the couple things that we did do. We did the brakes, we did the hand grips, we did a key switch. Key switch doesn't really have much to talk about. I did explain why I went ahead and purchased a new key switch for those of you all who do not remember. The key switch was basically replaced because I left it at the guy's house and I didn't want to turn back and get it. Long story short. I mean, it was three and a half hours one way or three hours one way to go pick up this machine and head back. I just didn't want to double back with the truck and trailer. And I kind of just wanted to get out of there. And, you know, I just wanted to get out of there. So key, brakes, oil filter got put in, got the hand grips put on and we looted up the front. That's about it. All right, hopefully we'll get some more footage coming along soon. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe.